we cannot understand mm. how, as a channel that's you know supposed to be based around holistic health and nutrition. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Today we are making a response video for the YouTube channel Sarah's Day. We are, and we actually made a response video to another video by Sarah's Day last year called Why I'm No Longer Vegan. We'll link that down below, check that one out. Today we're responding to one of Sarah's new videos. We have had so many requests for this. So many. My goodness. Changing my diet, day in the life, health, fitness, food and life update. And I'm now vegan, question mark on the thumbnail. So <laughs> the requests have come about wow. because people were expecting that perhaps Sarah had gone vegan yeah. or at least was eating a vegan diet based on the title of the video and the thumbnail. Spoiler alert, she's not vegan and, uh, and they were, they, people were disappointed. disappointed. Yeah. So they wanted us to respond. Yes. So here we are. So here's the backstory. In late December, Sarah put out a video about a health announcement. I have SIN 3, so cervical dysplasia. I'm at level 3, which means I'm at the most high risk stage. So basically, there's stage 1, stage 2, and stage 3, and then there's cervical cancer. Stage 3 is the most serious stage where, um, like, a lot of your cervix is covered with the abnormal cells. So that is not great news, and we're sorry to hear this, Sarah, and obviously for any woman to get that phone call from your doctor with that news would just be like, oh, awful, awful. So Absolutely. Uh, not good. No. We'd actually never heard of SIN before, no. so we looked it up, and just reading from the Cleveland Clinic's website here, SIN usually occurs after a woman becomes infected with the HPV virus. This is a virus that is spread through sexual contact. In many cases, the immune system by itself will get rid of the virus. So apparently sin is actually very common. A lot of people, a lot of women experience this. Again, we'd never heard of it before, but anyhow, we're gonna link some information down below so you can do some more research. And I think a takeaway key message is please women practice safe sex, use a condom. Something we learn when reading up about sin and something that Sarah also spoke about is that when your immune system is low, you're more susceptible to the virus and it's harder to recover from, like with most viruses. Yes, and this made perfect sense to Sarah because she was talking about how in 2017, um, her immune system was shot to pieces. Apparently this was because of some parasites that she had and so this made total sense for her. And we will say that parasites are found in animal products. So yet another reason to go vegan. Since finding out that I had my cervical dysplasia, I've obviously been researching and trying to figure out what I can do to minimize my risk of having precancerous cells and trying to cure myself naturally. So in her new video, Sarah is making some dietary changes to help her recover from sin. So it's great to hear that she's making some positive changes. For example, she's stopped drinking coffee uh, because she's trying to create an alkaline environment in her body and coffee is acidic. She's eating more organic, which is a good thing if you can afford it, great. She's also eating more plant-based meals, so she's buying more fruit and starchy root vegetables like sweet potatoes, more cruciferous vegetables, and all of this is wonderful. So let's take a look at some parts of Sarah's video and see how we can help her further. So first up, we are totally confused by her opening clip. We were like, what? We had to re-watch it a few times. Let's see if you pick up what we saw. Are they sausages and eggs? Is it... Is it really? I don't know. <laughs> it looks like sausages and eggs. I mean, maybe I they're plant-based sausages. Well, they could be soy sausages. We could give her the benefit of the doubt. But if but... they're not, because she does visit a butcher later on, so it's possible that mm. they're not plant-based sausages. She doesn't specify. No. Anyway. Uh, and there's an egg in there. That's clearly not a vegan egg. That's right, even so... though you could buy a vegan egg. And we did think maybe this was a meal that her boyfriend was eating, but considering it's Sarah's video, it's changing her diet, and it's a day in her life, we can only assume that this is what she is eating. We just, we cannot understand mm. how as a channel that's, you know, supposed to be based around holistic health and nutrition, nutrition and she wants to have a, an alkaline body and fight precancerous cells. You're showing sausages. In the first Processed seconds. meat, you know, it's the bottom of the barrel. And it's not just that she's showing it, no. but it's kind of like that repetitive, it's um, like a feature, like it's glamorized, like look how cool this edit is. Um, Sausages and eggs! <laughs> you know what they put in sausages? Oh, you don't want to know, no, but you should know. That's right. Then you wouldn't buy them. Mm -hmm. And now, she doesn't actually eat this meal in the video. She didn't say anything about the meal, but it is shown repetitively yeah. in the intro. So, so it's so confusing. We're, we're, we're totally confused. Yeah. And we're confused because according to the World Health Organization, 
Processed meats, like sausages, are classified as class 1 carcinogens. That is, they actually cause cancer. Obviously not something you'd want to put into your body if you've just found out that you're the stage before being diagnosed with cervical cancer. Now disclaimer, please listen carefully. We are not saying that a vegan cannot develop cancer nor are we saying that a vegan diet can cure all cancers. No, because there are so many different ways to eat a vegan diet. So deep fried junk food and Oreos obviously is not going to be cancer preventing, but we're focusing on a whole foods plant-based diet. And of course there are so many environmental yes. factors that could cause cancer, even if you were eating the, uh, a whole food plant-based organic diet. That's right, but science is telling us that a diet based around whole plant foods is the best shot we have at preventing and in some cases even reversing cancer. Basically, it's the least we can do to reduce the risk. So how do animal products, including sausages and egg, promote cancer cell growth? The protein in animal products appears to increase IGF-1 levels, and too much IGF-1 may lead to cancer cell growth. Remember the Pritikin experiment? You put people on a plant-based diet and exercise, and as little as 12 days, you can turn their bloodstream into a cancer cell fighting machine. Here's the before picture, a layer of breast cancer cells is laid down in a petri dish, and then blood from women eating the standard American diet is dripped on them. And as you can see, even people eating crappy diets have some ability to break down cancer. But after just 12 days eating healthy, blood was drawn from those same women, dripped on another carpet of breast cancer cells, and this is what you're left with. Right? Their bodies cleaned up. You can also look at it another way. This is what's called a terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase, DUTP, NIC end labeling, or tunnel imaging, uh, which measures DNA fragmentation, cell death. Dying cells show up as white spots. Uh, so again, this is the before, what the blood of your average woman can do to breast cancer cells. It can kill a few. Uh, but then, after 12 days of healthy plant-based living, their blood can do this. This is that programmed cancer cell death. After eating healthy, their own bodies were able to reprogram the cancer cells, forcing them into early re retirement. It's, a, it's like uh, you're an entirely different person inside. How does a simple dietary change make one's bloodstream so inhospitable to cancer in just a matter of days? That was the next question they set out to answer, and they finally did in 2011. Here we sought to determine the underlying mechanisms for this anti-cancer effect. Well, what they came up with was IGF-1. If you measure the blood levels of insulin-like growth factor 1 before and after 11 days on a plant-based diet with exercise, IGF-1 levels significantly drop, and IGF-1 binding protein levels significantly rise. That's one way our body tries to protect itself from cancer, from excessive growth, by releasing a binding protein into the bloodstream to tie up IGF-1. It's like our body's emergency break. Yeah, sure, in as little as 11 days, a healthy diet can reprogram our body to slow down IGF-1 production, but you still have all that you know, IGF-1 circulating in your bloodstream from the you know, bacon and eggs you had the week before. So your liver releases this snatch squad of binding proteins to take it out of circulation pronto. Exercise alone can drop IGF-1 levels, but you need that plant-based diet to get those kind of snatch squad levels. And so with that combination, 20% less IGF-1 and 50% more IGF-1 binding protein, no wonder there's such a dramatic cancer cell die-off after just a few days. So did they solve the riddle? Did they figure out how a plant-based diet shuts down cancer growth? Well, the definitive study wasn't published until recently. Same as last time, before and after a few weeks of a plant-based diet. Uh, cancer cell growth drops, and programmed cell death, cancer cell death, shoots up. But then here's the kicker. Remember how IGF-1 levels dropped? Well, what if you added back to the cancer the exact same level of you know, amount of IGF-1 banished from your body because of the healthy diet? What if you added that back in with the cancer? It erases the diet and exercise effect. It's like you never started eating healthy at all. Now, if cancer growth just came back down to here, you'd be like, oh, okay, IGF-1 was part of it. But the fact that it eliminates the effects of the lifestyle changes suggests that it was the mechanism all along. Walking and eating a plant-based diet for just a few days lowers circulating IGF-1 levels, which then can reverse cancer growth.
So in Sarah's video, she's doing grocery shopping, she's buying lots of fruit and vegetables, all the good stuff. And then... And eggs. Eggs. No. Extraordinary. Yeah, true. <laughs> I mean, you oh. might be thinking, oh, but they're organic and they're free range, so they're okay, right? Well, in terms of health, everything we just heard about animal protein, IGF-1, and cancer cell growth still applies, yep. whether they're organic and free range or caged and conventional eggs. Yeah. And not to mention uh, the fact that they also contain saturated fat and cholesterol, which clog our arteries and lead to our leading cause of death, heart disease, as well as uh, other leading chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes, some forms of cancer and other diseases. From the ethical perspective, please do not buy the humane lie. Free range, cage free, organic, it doesn't matter. All baby male chicks are killed and all hens are ultimately slaughtered for their meat. Kurt also showed me this local butcher. Everything he does is grass fed. He only uses like natural ingredients. And they're gluten free as well. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> grass fed, natural ingredients, gluten free. Again, local. Make, local, make no difference whatsoever yeah. to the animal protein, IGF-1 and cancer cell growth or the saturated fat and cholesterol that lead to heart disease, type 2 diabetes, some forms of cancers and other leading diseases. And the fact that all of these animals at the end of the day are needlessly slaughtered in a slaughterhouse. Remember, it's a house of slaughter. Nothing humane happens there, irrespective of how these animals are raised. And they don't go willingly to their deaths. No, they kick and scream and fight for their life till the very end. Just as we would, or our cat or our dog would. And in terms of the environment, if you watch Cowspiracy, you'll learn that grass-fed cattle is actually worse for the environment than factory farm raised cattle. So Sarah, please do not promote this as a good thing on your channel to your very large audience because you have so much influence. This is incredibly irresponsible for the planet, for the environment. As you guys can see from my dinner last night, it was completely vegan, so it was a plant-based dinner. I guess I've been making a conscious effort to eat more plant-based, only because a lot of the research that I've been doing, it's really about creating an alkaline environment in your body so that the precancerous cells can't thrive, if that makes sense. It makes perfect sense, absolutely. What doesn't make sense is that you know this, but you're still eating animal products. And as we saw from the video that we played earlier, any amount of animal products is going to increase the production of IGF-1 in the body, which is going to pro proliferate cancer cell growth. So it's not what you're after. So you basically have to eliminate the animal products altogether. Every now and then I will try to make a purposeful dinner where we don't focus on meat or any kind of animal product. Every now and then. If we refer back to the mm. video that we've included in this video, you'll hopefully understand now, Sarah, that every now and then is not going to give your immune system the optimal chance of overcoming your condition. Yeah, and I think like if we got that diagnosis, we'd want to do what is optimal. You know, you want to give yourself the best shot. So I'd just be like dropping those animal products, yeah. heading straight to a whole plant foods diet. It's just, it makes sense. So it's great to see that you're already on the path, Sarah. You're doing some great research. You've made some good changes. You've got more fruits and vegetables. You're doing the good stuff. Just drop the remaining animal products. So Sarah, because you promote your channel as being about holistic health and nutrition, we know you'll be open to the information we've shared in this video. We've linked all the references in the description below this video for you to research further. And if we can be of any assistance in any way, just let us know. Yeah, and what was wonderful to see were the comments under Sarah's video. So many of you guys were recommending the same thing. Whole plant foods, drop the animal products. You were sending Sarah over to nutritionfacts.org and also recommending Dr. Greger's book, How Not to Die. So I think we We've all done the best that we can to give Sarah the information and we just hope that you follow through. That would be really great, Sarah, not only for you, but for your audience as well. Absolutely. Leave your comments down below, guys. We'd love to hear from you. Give the video a like, share it around to raise awareness. That's very important. Yes, and, and please subscribe to the channel as well. Don't forget to hit that notification button down below so that you're notified every time we upload a new video. And remember until next time that going vegan is not the most we can do. It's the least we can do. See you next video. Bye guys.